I love cheap definitions because they never satisfy me. <laughs> you know, cheap definitions, those quickie fix it things, you know, where it says something like, you know, well, love is, or, you know, try to define something that you really can't define, but they always give you some quickie answer to make it fit. I just don't like it. When it comes to spiritual matters, it seems that Christians are famous for taking things for granted that other people don't have a clue what you're talking about. We have this terminology that extends somewhere between physical, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual, and sometimes even philosophical, and even dimensional, that if we really took it down to the sciences and tried to apply some kind of meaning to it, we would be looking pretty stupid over some of the things that we take for granted, that we try to tell other people about, that we really don't understand ourselves. And that's kind of why sometimes Christians look dumb to other people, especially intellectuals or scientists or other people that deal in other ways of communication that we may not possibly be using the right terminologies to fit their understanding of what we're talking about. Now, having said that, that means that there's sometimes things in your theology or your practical way of living out your life in a religious context that doesn't make sense to a person who isn't already involved in what you're learning about or what you've learned about. So sometimes words don't communicate the best concept of what you're speaking about. And grace is one of those concepts that really is completely confusing to everyone that's involved in it. Because they don't understand what you're talking about when you say grace. Because the closest that we've ever come to understanding grace was when the world dealt with feudal system, meaning that there was a king and there was a proper etiquette towards addressing a king, a way of dealing with the reality of someone who had absolute power of life and death and authority over you. Meaning that slavery would be the best way to look at it. And we don't really deal with that subject in America too well. We look at it completely opposite of what other countries have done in their history. Now, in the old days, when you thought of the King Arthur and the knights and you know shining armor and princesses and queens and kings and all that stuff, sometimes some things aren't completely brought out in those old stories. For instance, if you were somebody who was nobody and you tried to come before the king, you'd be killed because, after all, you were a nobody and kings didn't have time for you. So you would be prevented from presenting yourself in the king's court, so to speak. You would not be able to come forward and talk to the king. That's why this whole idea of grace is lost in a modern America, because a lot of times most Americans kind of don't get the idea of what grace really is, or how it extends, applies, or how to define it. So when we're studying this topic of grace and video grace, we will be coming to lots of added definition and try to explain the definition better than what may be contained within the books that we're using. For instance, we're using Why Grace Changes Things by Chuck Smith. But we want to get more so into also understanding that we don't define it correctly. We don't really apply it completely. We don't always have a proper comprehension of it or we would not take it for granted so easily. Because grace is actually that capability of a person to wipe you out or not wipe you out, depending upon their own decision-making process. If the person chooses to not wipe you out, then he gives you grace. Because whether you are guilty or not, the extension of grace is given in the way of allowing you to exist in the presence of that person the king especially, and that's how grace was extended. Someone in higher authority had authority over you, and you were able to extend something that they could not have a right to expect, did not have any means to get, 
and were unable to provide for themselves the opportunity to be a part of it had to be given solely by the person who was able to deem another person worthy to receive it as well as the person himself to have the authority to give it so it was always a person in higher authority extending it to a person of lower authority or a person of means extending it to a person of no means kind of gets a little confusing but if you think of it like the king you know saying hey you know yeah you can talk to me or no you're dead you know it's kind of the way it is and a lot of times Americans reject and object to that because they think they have the right and privilege to open their mouth anytime they want to and shoot off their mouth anywhere they want to and do whatever they want to and they think that freedom is some kind of lack of self-discipline and sadly that's where our state of affairs is today freedom is not about being undisciplined freedom is about choosing where and how to exercise the ability to make choices having that ability to make a choice is what freedom really is when you don't when you exercise freedom in a negative way it's called being stupid <laughs> so in video grace in studying what is grace the root meaning of the word grace as written in the scriptures in the Bible itself is beauty in the New Testament grace means God's unmerited favor grace is God giving to me something I cannot obtain on my own. Grace is being accepted by God even though I do not deserve it, even though I am not worthy of it. That short two-sentence definition really is covering a wealth of theology about what grace is. And so don't think that that's actually the best all-inclusive definition of grace that's just simply what grace does for you and how it's being used to you by what God has done in a lot more than what's being said so you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt and continue on in learning and not try to make short quick answers to something that's deeper than say oh you know like a puddle like the first time you step in a puddle called grace you're going to drown because it's fathoms deep of more knowledge and wisdom than you possibly could comprehend in this life as well as so much more that we're going to learn about it in the life to come the Bible teaches that I receive grace on the basis of my belief and trust in God Hebrews 11 6 declares that without faith it is impossible to please God we are forgiven by a holy God simply by believing in Jesus Christ and in his death on our behalf when we place our trust in him, our slate is wiped clean. I always like grace because grace means that God decides, not me. Now, I understand the definition of what is being said, but I don't agree necessarily with the exclusionary parts of what is being done. Because you see, Jesus said that he could determine whether or not we know him. Grace is an unmerited favor extended to us that we could have the opportunity to be saved, but God is the only one who determines our salvation. That is why we still continue on in relationship of knowing Jesus, because if we don't continue that relationship, then the Bible declares we never knew him. So just because you believe in Jesus Christ, just because you have faith in Jesus doesn't mean necessarily that God's grace has been extended to you because God still has the opportunity to say yes he extended grace to you or no he did not you will not know until the day you stand before God literally and he says yes or Jesus says yes he's mine and God says okay well I accept him on the basis of your sacrifice so if he's one of yours fine you take him <laughs> He's all yours. And then Jesus rewards us according to what we've done in our life by the measure of faithfulness to him. But you see, there's also an interesting criteria there that in Matthew 20, in Matthew on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus likewise said something about those servants who looked like they had done what he said, acted like they had done what he said, 
even did miracles according to what they said and according to what Jesus spoke to us about. But he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Whoa. How could someone who looks like a Christian, acts like a Christian, talks like a Christian, and technically be a Christian be cast away from Jesus? Which means literally no salvation. That's an interesting problem because you find that if you choose to believe only in, well, if I just accept Jesus and I just believe in him, that's enough, then somewhere along the line you've mistaken what grace is. You haven't applied all of what God is doing in giving you grace. He gives you grace and measures it accordingly to you by the fact that he is the one who is changing you and presenting you before his Father with exceeding joy in perfection on that day. But in the meantime, if you go your own way and you don't allow God to work in your life and you choose not to obey, then you find yourself outside of grace. You find yourself extending yourself into rebellion. And those that rebel against the spirit of grace, as we're told, are actually never those who have ever received grace for their actions and attitudes of the heart that they had because they had hardened their heart away from God. And God says, look, I wrote the book. From the beginning of the world and the foundation, I knew this person never would have been saved. So I can say to you that he never had salvation. Now we, being in life, not knowing time ahead of time, can't make those determinations. We can't say who a person is today because we don't know what they will be tomorrow. They may have never been part of God's kingdom, but God may have used them anyways to furtherance the gospel and to provide opportunity for those to know him in a personal intimate way. That's why there's a relationship that must be also a part of grace. Because you can't get something personally unless you know someone personal. You have to have that interaction of grace with the person who's extending it to you in order for it to be real to you. If you don't have interaction, but you only have reception, meaning that you just say you believe without there being interaction of faith and relationship, then you're putting yourself in a very precarious spot. You're exercising a religious truth without there being a relationship to it. And you're going to find yourself outside of God's kingdom because God determined that those who were His had the Son of God living inside of them. He said, those whom I know, I will live inside them. Those whom I know, I will speak to them and they will hear my voice and they will follow me for they will not follow the voice of another. In other words, there is always that criteria that Jesus has stated that must be looked at and made aware of when you are trying to examine the topic of grace. When you are trying to acknowledge what grace does for you and what grace is to you. Because without there being a relationship of the person giving you that grace, you don't have it. Bluntly. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. Grace is the measure of extension to you for the salvation of your soul. You can't get grace by just simply believing. You can't get grace simply by just receiving. You have to get grace by God giving you grace. And the way he does that is by, first of all, starting a relationship with him by believing in Jesus Christ. Developing that relationship by receiving Jesus following that relationship by acknowledging his words and allowing him to live in you as well as being led by the Spirit of God as he comes to you and you ask him to come into your life to change you into the image of his son. There's more of a process to the salvation than meets the eye. It always sounds nice to make short quid quo, pro quid quo answers that simply say, oh well, you know, you got grace so you're, you're saved. And then the person goes out and murders people. Well, I'm saved by grace, so I can go out and kill anyone. And then it says, well, no, 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 no. You, you, you messed up. You know, you're here, let me show you the other part. Well, they don't explain the other part in the beginning. And that's why we're studying grace together. Because in video grace, we want you to completely comprehend that no, you're not saved by your own works, but you're not saved by your own faith. You see what I'm saying? You're saved by God giving it to you 
But you can't take it for granted because you don't know how he has given it to you, when he's given it to you, or how it applies to you in the extension of his will being done in your life. That means that, no, you can't get away with it. You can't get away with taking grace and running with it. There is no such thing as cheap grace versus expensive grace versus sinful grace versus forgiving grace versus any kind of grace. It's either grace you are saved or grace you are not saved. But the way that's applied is by way of the knowledge of how God extends grace. And that's why we study it and that's why you have to understand what grace is. Otherwise, I would agree with you. I would perfectly agree with the sinner that runs up to me and says, Hey, I got grace, man. I can do anything I want to. I can go out and sin. I can go out and murder. I can go out and kill. I could go out and reject Jesus Christ. Because after all, I'm saved by grace. And I would agree with them based upon our definition so far of grace. But you see, because I do know who gives grace, I know how he gives grace, and I know what grace is, I know why that can't be true. And that's why we trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him and letting him direct our path as he leads us into studying grace so that we would have knowledge of what grace is, but then we would learn wisdom of how to apply grace into our life. So as we learn what grace is, I pray that God will open your eyes to understand there's more to the word than meets the eye. And your cheap definition is not a definition at all. If you can define grace in one or two sentences, you don't know what grace is at all.